Hello, and welcome to the Public Domain Plays Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Laura Barnes. And I'm your other host, Haz Katie. Today we will be performing Anton Chekhov's last play, The Cherry Orchard, first performed in 1904. We are using a translation by Julius West. Now we would like to introduce you to our actors. My name is Laura Barnes, my pronouns are she, her, and I will be playing Madame Luba. My name is Kai, I will be playing Anya, and my pronouns are they, them. My name is J.R. Steele, my pronouns are he and they, and I'm going to be playing Leonid Andreevich Gaev and Simeon Pantaleevich Pikodov. Hello, my name is Emily Porter Siegel, I use they, them pronouns, and today I'll be playing Yermolai Alexeyevich Lopakin. Hi, my name is Drew Balmer, my pronouns are he, him, and I'll be playing Pyotr Trofimov and Fears. My name is Haz Katie, I will be playing Boris Simonov Pishin, Danyasha, and the Station Master. My name is Michael Gallier, I will be reading for Yasha and the Tramp, and my pronouns are he, him, his. Public Domain Plays presents The Cherry Orchard. The train's arrived, thank God. What's the time? It will soon be two. It is light already. How much was the train late? Two hours, at least. (sighs) I have made a rotten mess of it. I came here on purpose to meet them at the station and then overslept myself. In my chair. It's a pity. I wish you'd have wakened me. I thought you'd gone away. I think I hear them coming. No. They've got to collect their luggage and so on. Lubov Vondrievna has been living abroad for five years. I don't know what she'll be like now. She's a good sort. An easy, simple person. I remember when I was a boy of fifteen, my father, who is dead, who used to keep a shop in the village here, hit me on the face with his fist, and my nose bled. We had gone into the yard together for something or other, and he was a little drunk. Lubov Andreevna, as I remember her now, was still young and very thin, and she took me to the washstand here in this room, the nursery. She said, Don't cry, little man. It'll be all right in time for your wedding. Little man. (laughs) My father was a peasant, it's true, but here I am in a white waistcoat and yellow shoes, a pearl out of an oyster. I'm rich now, with lots of money. But just think about it and examine me, and you'll find I'm still a peasant down to the marrow of my bones. Here I've been reading this book, but I understood nothing. I read and fell asleep. The dogs didn't sleep all night. They know that they're coming. What's up with you, Dunyasha? My hands are shaking. I shall faint. You're too sensitive, Dunyasha. You dress just like a lady, and you do your hair like one, too. You oughtn't. You should know your place. The gardener sent these. Said that to go to the dining room. And you'll bring me some kvass. Very well. There's a frost this morning. Three degrees. And the cherry trees are all in flower. I can't approve of our climate. I can't. Our climate is indisposed to favor us, even this once. And Ermolai Alexeyevich, allow me to say to you, in addition, that I bought myself some boots two days ago, and I beg to assure you that they squeak in a perfectly unbearable manner. What shall I put on them? Go away. You bore me. Ugh, some misfortune happens to me every day. But I don't complain. I'm used to it. And I can smile. I shall go... (sighs) There. There, you see? If I may use the word, what circumstances I am in, so to speak... It is even simply marvellous. I must confess to you, Yermolai Alexeyevich, that Epikhodov has proposed to me. Ah. I don't know what to do about it. He's a nice young man, but every now and again when he begins talking, you can't understand a word he's saying. I think I like him. He's madly in love with me. He's an unlucky man. Every day something happens. We tease him about it. They call him two and twenty troubles. There they come, I think. They're coming? Oh, what's the matter with me? I'm cold all over. There they are, right enough. Let's go and meet them. Will she know me? We haven't seen each other for five years. I shall faint in a minute. Oh, I'm fainting. Let's come through here. Do you remember what this room is, Mother? The nursery. How cold it is. My hands are quite numb. 
Your rooms, the white one and the violet one, are just as they used to be, Mother. My dear nursery, oh, you beautiful room. I used to sleep here when I was a baby. <laughs> and here I am like a little girl again. And Varia is just as she used to be, just like a nun. And I knew Dunyasha. The train was two hours late. There now, how's that for punctuality? My dog eats nuts too. To think of that now. We did have to wait for you. I didn't get any sleep for four nights on the journey. I'm awfully cold. You went away during Lent when it was snowing and frosty, but now, darling, we did have to wait for you, my joy, my pet. I must tell you at once, I can't bear to wait a minute. Oh, something else now? The clerk at the Kodok proposed to me after Easter. Always the same. I've lost all my hairpins. I don't know what to think about it. He loves me. He loves me so much. My room. My windows. As if I'd never gone away. I'm at home. Tomorrow morning, I'll get up and have a run in the garden. Oh, if I could only get to sleep. I didn't sleep the whole journey. I was so bothered. Peter Sergeyevich came two days ago. Peter! He sleeps in the bathhouse. He lives there. He said he was afraid he'd be in the way. I ought to wake him, but Barbara Milanova told me not to. Don't wake him, she said. Dunyasha, some coffee, quick. Mother wants some. This minute. Well, you've come, glory be to God. Home again. My darling is back again. My pretty one is back again. I did have an awful time, I tell you. I can just imagine it. I went away in Holy Week. It was very cold then. Charlotta tucked the whole way and would go on performing her tricks. Why did you tie Charlotta onto me? You can't go you couldn't go alone, darling, at seventeen. We went to Paris. It's cold there and snowing. I talk French perfectly horribly. My mother lives on the fifth floor. I go to her and find her there with various Frenchmen, women, an old abbe with a book, and everything in tobacco smoke and with no comfort at all. I suddenly became very sorry for mother. So sorry that I took her head in my arms and hugged her and wouldn't let go. Then mother started hugging me and crying. Don't say any more. Don't say any more. She's already sold her villa n near Mentone. She's nothing left. Nothing. And I haven't a cockpeck left either. We only just managed to get here. And mother won't understand. We had dinner at a station. She asked for all the expensive things and tipped the waiters one ruble each. And Charlotta, too. Yasha wants his share, too. It's too bad. Mother's got a footman now, Yasha. We brought him here. I saw the wretch. How's business? Has the interest been paid? Not much chance of that. Oh, God. Oh, God. The place will be sold in August. Oh, God. Moo. I'd like to. Varya, has he proposed to you? But he loves you. Why don't you make up your minds? Why do you keep on waiting? I think that it will all come to nothing. He's a busy man. I'm not his affair. He pays no attention to me. Bless the man, I don't want to see him. Every but everybody talks about our marriage, everybody congratulates me, and there's nothing in it at all. It's all like a dream. You've got a brooch like a bee. Mother bought it. In Paris, I went up in a balloon. My darling's come back. My pretty one's come back. I go about all day looking after the house, and I think all the time, if only you could marry a rich man, then I'd be happy and would go away somewhere by myself, then to Kiev, to Moscow, and so on, from one holy place to another. I'd tramp and tramp. That would be splendid. The birds are singing in the garden. What time is it now? It must be getting on for three. Time you went to sleep, darling. Splendid. May I go this way? I hardly knew you, Yasha. You have changed abroad. Hmm. And who are you? When you went away, I was only so high. I'm Dunyasha, the daughter of Theodore Kozy Kozyedov. You don't remember? Oh, you little cucumber. What's that? I've broken a saucer. It may bring luck. We must tell Mother that Peter's here. I told them not to wake him. Father died six years ago, and a month later, my brother Grisha was drowned in the river. Such a dear little boy of seven. Mother couldn't bear it. She went away, away, without looking round. 
Uh, how I understand her. She only knew. And Peter Trofimov was Grisha's tutor. He might tell her. The mistress is going to have some food here. Is the coffee ready? You, where's the cream? Oh, dear me. Ah, oh, you bungler. Mm. Back from Paris. Uh, master went to Paris once. In a carriage. What are you talking about, Pierre's? I beg your pardon? <laughs> ah, the mistress is home again. I've lived to see her. Don't care if I die now. <laughs> uh. Let me remember now. Red into the corner, twice into the center. Right into the pocket. Once upon a time, you and I used both to sleep in this room. And now I'm 51. It does seem strange. Yes, time does go. Uh, who does? I said that time does go. It smells of patchouli in here. I'm going to bed. Good night, mother. My lovely little one. Glad to be at home. I can't get over it. Good night, uncle. Mwah, mwah. God be with you. How you do resemble your mother. You were just like her at her age, Luba. She's awfully tired. It's a very long journey. Well, sirs, it's getting on for three. Quite time you went. <laughs> You're just the same as ever, Varya. I'll have some coffee now, and then we'll all go. Thank you, dear. I'm used to coffee. I drink it day and night. Thank you, dear old man. I'll go and see if they've brought in all the luggage. Is it really I who am sitting here? <laughs> I want to jump about and wave my arms. But suppose I'm dreaming. God knows I love my own country. I love it deeply. I couldn't look out the railway carriage. I cried so much. Still, I must have my coffee. Thank you, Fierce. Thank you, dear old man. I'm so glad you're still with us. Mm, the, the day before yesterday. <clears throat> he, uh, he doesn't hear well. I've got to go off to Kharkov by the five o'clock train. I'm awfully sorry. I, I just like to have a look at you. To gossip a little. You're as fine looking as ever. Even finer looking. Dressed in Paris fashions. Confound it all. Your brother, Leonid Andreevich, says I'm a snob, an ursurer, but that is absolutely nothing to me. Let him talk. Only, I do wish you would believe in me as you once did, that your wonderful touching eyes would look at me as they did before. M Merciful God, my father was the serf of your grandfather and your own father, but you... You, more than anybody else, did so much for me once upon a time that I have forgotten everything and love you as if you belong to my family, and even more. I can't sit still. I'm not in a state to do it. I'll never survive this happiness. You can laugh at me. I'm a silly woman. My dear little cupboard! My little table! Nurse has died in your absence. Yes, bless her soul. I heard by letter. And Anastasius has died too. Peter Kosoy has left me and now lives in town with the commissioner of police. My daughter, Dushenka, sends her love. I want to say something very pleasant, very delightful to you. I'm going away at once. I haven't much time, but I'll tell you all about it in two or three words. As you already know, your cherry orchard is to be sold to pay your debts, and the sale is fixed for August 22nd. But you needn't be alarmed, dear madam. You may sleep in peace. There's a way out. Here's my plan. Please attend carefully. Your estate is only 13 miles from town. The railway runs by. And if the cherry orchard and the land by the river are broken up into building lots and are leased off for villas, you'll get at least 25,000 rubles a year net profit out of it. How utterly absurd. I don't understand you at all, Yermolai Oksievich. You will get 25 rubles a year for each desitine from the leaseholders at the very least. And if you advertise now, I'm willing to bet that you won't have a vacant plot left by the autumn. They'll all go. In a word, you're saved. I congratulate you. 
Only, of course, you'll have to put things straight and clean up. For instance, you'll have to pull down all the old buildings. This house, which isn't any use to anybody now, and cut down the old cherry orchard. Cut it down? My dear man, you must excuse me, but you don't understand anything at all. If there's anything interesting or remarkable in the whole province, it's this cherry orchard of ours. The only remarkable thing about the orchard is that it's very large. It only bears fruit every other year, and even then you don't know what to do with them. Nobody buys any. This orchard is mentioned in the Encyclopedic Dictionary. If we can't think of anything and don't make up our minds to anything, then on August 22nd, both the Cherry Orchard and the whole estate will be up for auction. Make up your mind! I swear, there's no other way out. I'll swear it again. In the old days, uh, 40 or 50 years back, they dried the cherries, soaked them, and pickled them, and made jam of them, and... It used to happen Be that... Be quiet, fears. And then we'd send the dried cherries off in carts to Moscow and Kharkov and on money. <laughs> and the dried cherries were soft, juicy, sweet, and nicely scented. <laughs> they knew the way. What was the way? They'd forgotten. Nobody remembered. What about Paris, eh? Did you eat any frogs? I ate crocodiles. To think of that now. Up to now, in the villages, there were only the gentry and the laborers. And now, the people who live in villas have arrived. All towns now, even small ones, are surrounded by villas. And it's safe to say that in 20 years' time, the villa resident will be all over the place. At present, he sits on his balcony and drinks tea, but it may well come to pass that he'll begin to cultivate his patch of land, and then your cherry orchard will be happy, rich, splendid- <sighs> What rot! There are two telegrams for you, little mother. Here they are. They're from Paris. I've done with Paris. And do you know, Luba, how old this case is? A week ago, I took out the bottom drawer. I looked and saw figures burnt out in it. That case was made exactly a hundred years ago. What do you think of that? What? We could celebrate its jubilee. It hasn't a soul of its own, but still, say what you will, it's a fine bookcase. A hundred years. Think of that. Yes, it's a real thing. Oh, my dear and honored case, I congratulate you on your existence, which has already for more than a hundred years been directed towards the bright ideals of good and justice your silent call to productive labor has not grown less in the hundred years during which you have upheld virtue and faith in a better future to the generations of our race, educating us up to ideals of goodness and to the knowledge of a common consciousness. Yes. You're just the same as ever, Leon. Off to the white on the right, into the corner pocket, red ball goes into the middle pocket. It's time I went. Will you take your pills now? You oughtn't take medicines, dear madam. They do you neither harm nor good. Give them here, madam. There. You're off your head. I've taken all the pills. Gormandizer. <laughs> <laughs> they were here in Easter week and ate half a pailful of cucumbers. What's he driving at? He's been mumbling away for three years. We're used to that. Senile decay. Excuse me, Charlotta Ivanova, I haven't said how do you do to you yet. If you let people kiss your hand, then they'll want your elbow, then your shoulder, and then... My luck's out today. <laughs> <laughs> Show us a trick, Charlotta Ivanova. Charlotta, do us a trick. It's not necessary. I want to go to bed. We shall see each other in three weeks. Now, goodbye. It's time to go. See you again. Au revoir. I don't want to go away. If you think about the villas and make up your mind, then just let me know. And I'll raise a loan of 50,000 rubles at once. Think about it seriously. Do go. Now. I'm going. I'm going. Snob. Still, I beg pardon. Varya's going to marry him. He's Varya's young man. Don't talk too much, uncle. 
Why not, Varya? I should be very glad. He's a good man. To speak the honest truth, he's a worthy man. And my Dushenka also says that. She says a lot of things. But still, dear madam, if you could lend me 240 rubles to pay the interest on my mortgage tomorrow. We haven't got it. We haven't got it. It's quite true. I have nothing at all. I'll find it all right. I never lose hope. I used to think, everything's lost now. I'm a dead man. When, lo and behold, a railway was built over my land, and they paid me for it. And something else will happen today or tomorrow. Dushenka may win 20,000 rubles. She's got a lottery ticket. The coffee's all gone. We can go to bed. We've got on the wrong trousers again. <laughs> what am I to do with you? Anya's asleep. The sun has risen already. It isn't cold. Look, little mother. What lovely trees and air. The starlings are singing. Oh, the whole garden's white. You haven't forgotten, Luba. There's that long avenue going straight. Straight, like a stretched strap. It shines on moonlit nights. Do you remember? You haven't forgotten? Oh, my childhood. Days of my innocence. In this nursery I used to sleep, I used to look out from here into the orchard. Happiness used to wake with me every morning, and then it was just as it is now. Nothing has changed. <laughs> it's all white. Oh, my orchard. After the dark autumns and the cold winters, you're young again, full of happiness. The angels of heaven haven't left you. If only I could take my heavy burden off my breast and shoulders, if I could forget my past. Yes, and they'll sell this orchard to pay off debts. How strange it seems. Look, there's my dead mother going in the orchard. Dressed in white. <laughs> That's she. Where? God bless you, little mother. There's nobody there. I thought I saw somebody. On the right, at the turning by the summer house, a white little tree bent down, looking just like a woman. What a marvelous garden. White masses of flowers, the blue sky. Luba Vandreevna. I only want to show myself and I'll go away. I was told to wait till the morning, but I just didn't have the patience. It's Peter Trofimov. Peter Trofimov, once the tutor of your Grisha. Have I changed much? Oh, that's enough. That's enough, Luba. But I told you, Peter, to wait till tomorrow. My Grisha. My boy. Grisha. My son. What are we to do, little mother? It's the will of God. It's all right. Uh, it's all right. My boy's dead. He was drowned. Why? Why, my friend? Anya's asleep in there. I am speaking so loudly, making such a noise. Well, Peter, what's made you look so bad? Why have you grown so old? In the train, an old woman called me a decayed gentleman. You were quite a boy then, a nice little student, and now your hair is not at all thick and you wear spectacles. Are you really still a student? I suppose I shall always be a student. Well, let's go to bed. And you've grown older, Leonid. Yes, we've got to go to bed. Oh, my gout. I'll stay the night here. If only, Lubov Andrei and... Now, my dear, you could get me 240 rubles tomorrow morning? Still the same story. 240 rubles to pay the interest on my mortgage. I haven't any money, dear man. I'll give it back. It's a small sum. Well, then, Leonid will give it to you. Let him have it, Leonid. <sighs> By all means. Hold out your hand. Why not? He wants it. He'll give it back. My sister hasn't lost the habit of throwing money about. Stand off, do. You smell of poultry. You are the same as ever, Leonid Andreevich. Really? What's he saying? Your mother's come from the village. She's been sitting in the servants' room since yesterday and wants to see you. Bless the woman. Shameless man. A lot of use there is in her coming. She might have come tomorrow just as well. Mother hasn't altered a scrap. She's just as she always was. She'd give away everything if the idea only entered her head. Yes. If there's any illness for which people offer many remedies, you may be sure that particular illness is incurable, I think. I work my brains to their hardest. I've several remedies, very many, and that really means I've none at all. It would be nice to inherit a fortune from somebody. It would be nice to marry our Anya to a rich man. 
It would be nice to go to Yaroslav and try my luck with my aunt, the Countess. My aunt is very, very rich. If only God helped us. Don't cry. My aunt's very rich, but she doesn't like us. My sister, in the first place, married an advocate, not a noble. She not only married a man who is not a noble, but she behaved herself in a way which cannot be described as proper. She's nice and kind and charming, and I'm very fond of her. But say what you will in her favor, and you still have to admit that she's wicked. You can feel it in her slightest movements. Anya's in the doorway. Really? It's curious. Something's got into my right eye. I can't see properly out of it. And on Thursday, when I was at the district court... Why aren't you in bed, Anya? Can't sleep. It's no good. Oh, my darling. Mwah, 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 my child. <laughs> you're not my niece. You're my angel. You're my all. Believe in me. Believe. I do believe in you, uncle. Everybody loves you and respects you. But, dear uncle, you ought to say nothing. No more than that. What were you saying just now about my mother, your own sister? Why did you say those things? Yes, yes. Yes, really, it was awful. Save me, my God. And only just now I made a speech before a bookcase. Oh, it's so silly. And only when I'd finished I knew how silly it was. Yes, uncle dear, you really ought to say less. Keep quiet, that's all. You'd be so much happier in yourself if you only kept quiet. All right, I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet, but let's talk business. On Thursday, I was in the district court, and a lot of us met there together, and we began to talk of this, that, and the other, and now I think I can arrange a loan to pay the interest of the bank. If only God would help us. I'll go on Tuesday. I'll talk with them about it again. Don't howl. Your mother will have a talk to Lepakin. He, of course, won't refuse. And when you've rested, you'll go to Yaroslav to the Countess, your grandmother. So you see, we'll have three irons in the fire, and we'll be safe. We'll pay up the interest, I'm certain. I swear on my honor, on anything you will, that the estate will not be sold. I swear on my happiness. Here's my hand. You may call me a dishonorable wretch if I let it go to auction. I swear by all I am. Oh, how good and clever you are, uncle. I'm happy now. I'm happy. All's well. Leonid Andreevich, don't you fear God? When are you going to bed? Uh, soon, soon. You go away, fears. I'll undress myself. Well, children, bye-bye. I'll give you the details tomorrow, but let's go to bed now. Mwah. Mwah. I'm a man of the 80s. People don't praise those years much, but I can still say that I've suffered for my beliefs. The peasants don't love me for nothing, I assure you. We've got to learn to know the peasants. We ought to learn how- You're doing it again, uncle. Be quiet, uncle. Leonid Andreevich! I'm coming, I'm coming. Go to bed now. Off two cushions in the middle. I turn over a new leaf. I'm quieter now. I don't want to go to Yaroslav. I don't like my grandmother. But I'm calm now, thanks to Uncle. It's time to go to sleep. I'll go. There's been an unpleasantness here while you were away. In the old servants' part of the house, as you know, only the old people live. Little old Ethan and Polya and Evstigne and Carp as well. They started letting some tramps or others spend the night there. I said nothing. Then I heard that they were saying that I had ordered them to be fed on peas and nothing else for meanness. From meanness, you see. And it was all Evstigny's doing. Very well, I thought, if that's what the matter is, just you wait. So I call Evstigny. Oh, he comes. What's this? I say, Evstigny, you old fool. Anya, dear. She's dropped off. Let's go to bye-bye. Come along. My darling has gone to sleep. Come on. Shh, she's asleep. Asleep. Come on, dear. Oh, I'm so tired. All the bells. Uncle, dear. Mother and uncle. Oh, my son. My spring.
real passport. I don't know how old I am, and I think I'm young. When I was a little girl, my father and mother used to go around fairs and give very good performances, and I used to do the Salto Mortale and various little things. And when Papa and Mama died, a German lady took me to her and began to teach me. I liked it. I grew up and became a governess. And where I came from and who I am, I don't know. Who my parents were? Perhaps they weren't married. I don't know. I don't know anything. I do want to talk, but I haven't anybody to talk to. I haven't anybody at all. What is this noisy to me? What matter friends and foes? <laughs> oh, I do love playing the mandolin. That's a guitar, not a mandolin. For the enamored madman, this is a mandolin. <laughs> Oh, that the heart was warmed by all the flames of love returned. <laughs> These people sing terribly. Boo! Like jackals! Still, it must be nice to live abroad. Yes, certainly. I cannot differ from you there. <sighs> that is perfectly natural. Abroad, everything is in full complexity. That goes without saying. I'm an educated man. I read various remarkable books, but I cannot understand the direction I myself want to go, whether to live or to shoot myself, as it were. So, in case, I always carry a revolver about with me. Here it is. I've done. Now I'll go. You, Epigodov, are a very clever man and very terrible. Women must be madly in love with you. Brr. These wise ones are all so stupid. I've nobody to talk to. I'm always alone. Alone. I've nobody at all. And I don't know who I am or why I live. As a matter of fact, independently of everything else, I must express my feeling, among other things, that fate has been as pitiless in her dealings with me as a storm is to a small ship. Suppose, let us grant, I am wrong. Then why did I wake up this morning, to give an example, and behold an enormous spider on my chest like that? And if I do drink some kvass, why is it that there is bound to be something of the most indelicate nature in it, such as a beetle? Have you read Buckle? I should like to trouble you, Avdotya Fed Fedorovna, for two words. Say on. I should prefer to be alone with you. Very well. Only first bring me my little cloak. It's by the little cupboard. It's a little damp here. Very well. I'll bring it. Now I know what to do with my revolver. Two and twenty troubles. A silly man between you and me and the gatepost. Ugh. I hope to goodness he won't shoot himself. I'm so nervous. I'm worried. I went into service when I was quite a little girl, and now I'm not used to common life. And my hands are white, white as a lady's. I'm so tender and so delicate now, respectable and afraid of everything. I'm so frightened. And I don't know what will happen to my nerves if you deceive me, Yasha. Little cucumber, of course every girl must respect herself. There's nothing I dislike more than a badly behaved girl. I'm awfully in love with you. You're educated. You can talk about everything. <sighs> yes, I think this. If a girl loves anybody, then that means she's immoral. It's nice to smoke a cigar out in the open air. Someone's coming. It's the mistress and people with her. Go to the house as if you'd been bathing in the river. Go by this path or they'll meet you and will think I've been meeting you. I can't stand that sort of thing. <coughs> My head's aching because of your cigar. You must make up your mind definitely. There's no time to waste. The question is perfectly plain. Are you willing to let the land for villas or no? Just one word. Yes or no. Just one word. Who's smoking horrible cigars here? They built that railway. That's made this place very handy. Went to town and had lunch. Right in the middle. I'd like to go in now and have just one game. You'll have time. Just one word! Give me an answer! <sighs> really? I had a lot of money yesterday, but there's very little today. My poor Varya feeds everybody on milk soup to save money. In the kitchen, the old people only get peas. And I spin recklessly. There they are, all over the place. Permit me to pick them up. Please do, Yasha. And why did I go and have lunch there? A horrid restaurant with band and tablecloth smelling of soap. Why do you drink so much, Leon? 
Why do you eat so much? Why do you talk so much? You talked again too much today in the restaurant, and it wasn't at all to the point. About the seventies and about decadence. And to whom? Talking to the waiters about decadence. Yes. I can't be cured, that's obvious. What's the matter? Why do you keep twisting about in front of me? I can't listen to your voice without laughing. Neither he or I. Go away, Yasha. Get out of this. <laughs> I'll go at once. <laughs> this minute. That rich man, Diragonoff, is preparing to buy your estate. They say he'll come to the sale himself. Where did you hear that? They say so in town. Our Yaroslav aunt has promised to send something, but I don't know when or how much. <laughs> how, how much will she send? A hundred thousand rubles? Or two, perhaps? I'll be glad of ten or fifteen thousand. You must excuse my saying so, but I've never met such frivolous people as you before, or anybody so unbusinesslike and peculiar. Here I am, telling you in plain language that your estate will be sold, and you don't seem to understand. What are we to do? Tell us what? I tell you every day. I say the same thing every day. Both the cherry orchard and the land must be leased off your villas and at once, immediately. The auction is staring at you in the face, understand? Once you do definitely make up your mind to the villas, then you'll have as much money as you want, and you'll be saved. Villas and villa residents? It's so vulgar, excuse me. I entirely agree with you. I must cry, or yell, or faint. I can't stand it. You're too much for me, you old woman. <laughs> really? Old woman! No, don't go away. Do stop. Be a dear, please. Perhaps we'll find some way out. What's the good of trying to think? Please don't go away. It's nicer when you're here. I keep on waiting for something to happen, as if the house is going to collapse over our heads. Double in the corner, across the middle. We have been too sinful. What sins have you committed? <laughs> they say that I've eaten all my substance and sugar candies. <laughs> oh, my sins. I've always scattered money about without holding myself in, like a mad woman, and I married a man who made nothing but debts. My husband died of champagne. He drank terribly. And to my misfortune, I fell in love with another man and went off with him. And just at that time, it was my first punishment, a blow that hit me right on the head. Here, in the river, my boy was drowned. And I went away, quite away, never to return, never to see this river again. I shut my eyes and ran without thinking, but he ran after me, without pity, without respect. I bought a villa near Mintone because he fell ill there, and for three years I knew no rest either by day or night. The sick man wore me out, and my soul dried up. And last year, when they had sold the villa to pay my debts, I went away to Paris, and there he robbed me of all I had and threw me over and went off with another woman. I tried to poison myself. It was so silly, so shameful. And suddenly I longed to be back in Russia, my own land, with my little girl. Lord, Lord, be merciful to me, forgive me my sins, punish me no more. I had this today from Paris. He begs my forgiveness, he implores me to return. Don't I hear music? That is our celebrated Jewish band. You remember, four violins, a flute, and a double bass. So it still exists. It would be nice if they came along some evening. I can't hear. For money will the Germans make, or Frenchmen, or the Russians. <laughs> I saw, saw such a, a, an awfully funny thing at the theater last night. I'm quite sure there wasn't anything at all funny. You oughtn't to go and see plays. You ought to go and look at yourself. What a grey life you lead. What a lot you talk unnecessarily. It's true. To speak the straight truth, we live a silly life. My father was a peasant. An idiot. He understood nothing. He didn't teach me. He was always drunk and always used a stick on me. 
In point of fact, I'm a fool and an idiot too. I've never learned anything. My handwriting is bad. I write so that I'm quite ashamed before people, like a pig. You ought to get married, my friend. Yes, that's true. Why not to Advaria? She's a nice girl. Yes. She's quite homely in her ways, works all day, and, what matters most, she's in love with you. And you've liked her for a long time. Well, I, I don't mind. She's a nice girl. I'm offered a place in a bank. Six thousand rubles a year, did you hear? What's the matter with you? Stay where you are. Leave, sir. Put this on, it's damp. You're a nuisance, old man. It's all very well. You went away this morning without telling me. How old you've grown, Fiers? I beg your pardon? She says you've grown very old. Mm. I've been alive a long time. They were already getting ready to marry me before your father was born. <laughs> and when the emancipation came, I was already first valet. Only I didn't agree with the emancipation and remained with my people. I remember everybody was happy, but they didn't know why. It was very good for them in the old days. Uh, at any rate, they used to beat them. Rather, the peasants kept their distance from the masters, and the masters kept their distance from the peasants. But now everything's all anyhow, and you can't understand anything. Oh, be quiet, fears. I've got to go to town tomorrow. I've been promised an introduction to a general who may lend me some money on a bill. Nothing will come of it. And you won't pay your interest, don't you worry. He's talking rubbish. There's no general at all. Here they are. Mother sitting down here. Come, come, my dears. If you two only knew how much I love you. Sit down next to me like that. Our eternal student is always with the ladies. That's not your business. He'll soon be 50 and he's still a student. Oh, leave off your silly jokes. Getting angry, eh, silly? Shut up, can't you? <laughs> I wonder what you think of me. I think, Yermolai Alexeyevich, that you're a rich man and you'll soon be a millionaire. Just as the wild beast which eats... Everything it finds is needed for changes to take place in matter. So you are needed, too. <laughs> <laughs> Better tell us something about planets, Peter. No, let's go on with yesterday's talk. About what? About the proud man. Yesterday we talked for a long time, but we didn't come to anything in the end. There's something mystical about the proud man, in your sense. Perhaps you are right from your point of view, but if you... Take the matter simply, without complicating it, then what pride can there be, what sense can there be in it, if a man is perfectly made, physiologically speaking, if in the vast majority of cases he is coarse and stupid and deeply unhappy? We must stop admiring one another. We, we must work. Nothing more. You'll die all the same. Who knows? What does it mean? Well, you'll die. No. Perhaps a man has a hundred senses, and, and when he dies, only the five known to us are destroyed, and the remaining ninety-five are left alive. How clever of you, Peter. Oh, awfully. The human race progresses, perfecting its powers. Everything that is unattainable now will someday be near at hand and comprehensible, but we must work. We must help with all our strength those who seek to know what fate will bring. Meanwhile, in Russia, only a very few of us work. The vast majority of those intellectuals whom I know seek for nothing, do nothing, and are at present incapable of hard work. They call themselves intellectuals, but they use thou and thee to their servants. They treat the peasants like animals. They learn badly. They read nothing. Seriously, they do absolutely nothing about science. They only talk about art. They understand little. They are all serious. They all have severe faces. They all talk about important things. They philosophize, and at the same time, the vast majority of us, 99 out of 100, live like savages, fighting and cursing at the slightest opportunity, eating filthily, sleeping in the dirt, 
and stuffiness with fleas, stinks, smells, moral filth, and so on. And it's obvious that all our nice talk is only carried on to distract ourselves and others. Tell me, where are those crochets we hear so much of? And where are those reading rooms? People only write novels about them. They don't really exist. Only dirt, vulgarity, and Asiatic plagues really exist. I'm afraid. And I don't at all like these serious faces. I don't like serious conversations. Let's, let's be quiet sooner. You know, I get up at five every morning. I work from morning till evening. I am always dealing with money, my own, and other people's, and I see what people are like. You've only got to begin to do anything to find out how few honest, honorable people there are. Sometimes, when I can't sleep, I think, Oh Lord, you've given us huge forests, infinite fields, and endless horizons. And we, living here, ought really to be giants. You want giants, do you? They're only good in stories, and even there they frighten one. Mm -hmm. At Pekotov's there. Yeah, Pekotov's there. The sunset, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Oh, nature, thou art wonderful. Thou shinest with eternal radiance, O oh, beautiful and indifferent one, thou whom we call mother, thou containest in thyself existence and death, thou livest and destroyest. Uncle, dear. Uncle, you're doing it again. You'd better uh, double the red to the middle. I'll be quiet, I'll be quiet. What's that? I don't know. It, it may be a bucket falling down a well somewhere, but it's some way off. Or perhaps it's some bird, like a heron. Or an owl. It's unpleasant somehow. Before the misfortune, the same thing happened. An owl screamed and the samovar hummed without stopping. Before what misfortune? Before the emancipation. You know, my friends, let's go in. It's evening now. You've tears in your eyes. What is it, little girl? It's it's nothing, mother. Someone's coming. Excuse me, may I go this way straight through to the station? You may. Go along this path. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. <gasps> Lovely weather. My brother, my suffering brother, come out on the Volga, you who groans. Mademoiselle, please give a hungry Russian 30 kopecks. Ah! There's manners everybody's got to keep. Take this. Here you are. Oh, there's no silver. It doesn't matter. Here's gold. I am deeply grateful to you. <laughs> I'm going. I'm... I'm going. Oh, little mother, at home there's nothing for the servants to eat. And you gave him gold? What is to be done with such a fool as I am? At home I'll give you everything I've got. Here, Malai Alexeyevich, lend me some more. Very well. Let's go, it's time. And Varya, we've settled your affair, I congratulate you. You shouldn't joke about this, mother. Oh, feel me. Get thee to a nunnery. My hands are all trembling. I haven't played billiards for a long time. Oh, feel me, nymph. Remember me in thine origins. Come along, it'll soon be supper time. He did frighten me. My heart is beating hard. Let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, on August 22nd, the cherry orchard will be sold. Think of that. Think of that. <laughs> Thanks to the tramp who frightened Barbara, we're alone now. Sorry is afraid we may fall in love with each other and won't get away from us for days on end. Her narrow mind won't allow her to understand that we, we are above love. To escape all the petty and deceptive things which prevent our being happy and free, that is the aim and meaning of our lives. Forward! We go irresistibly onto that bright star which burns there, in the distance. 
Don't lag behind, friends. <laughs> How beautifully you talk. It is glorious here today. Yes. The weather is wonderful. What have you done to me, Peter? I don't love the cherry orchard as I used to. I loved it so tenderly. I thought there was no better place in the world than our orchard. All of Russia is our orchard. The land is great and beautiful. There are many marvelous places in it. Think, Anya, your grandfather, your, your great-grandfather, and all your ancestors were surf owners. They owned living souls, and now, doesn't something human look at you from every cherry in the orchard, every leaf, and every stalk? Don't you hear voices? Oh, it's awful. Your, your orchard is terrible. And when in the evening or at night you walk through the orchard, then the old bark on the trees shed a dim light, and the old cherry trees seem to be dreaming of all that was a hundred, two hundred years ago, and are oppressed by their heavy visions. Still, at any rate, we've left those two hundred years behind us. So far, we've gained nothing at all. We don't yet know what the past is to be to us. We only philosophize, we complain that we are dull, or we drink vodka. For it's so clear that in order to begin to live in the present, we must first redeem the past. And that can only be done by suffering, by strenuous, uninterrupted labor. Understand that, Anya. The house in which we live has long ceased to be our house. I shall go away. I give you my word. If you have the housekeeping keys, throw them down the well and go away. Be as free as the wind. How nicely you've said that! Believe me, Anya, believe me. I'm not 30 yet, I'm young. I'm still a student, but I, I have undergone a great deal. I'm as hungry as the winter. I'm ill, I'm shaken. I'm as poor as a beggar. Where haven't I been? Fate has tossed me everywhere. But my soul is always my own. Every minute of the day and the night, is, it is filled with unspeakable presentiments. I know that happiness is coming, Anya. I see it already. The moon is rising. Anya, where are you? Yes, the moon is risen. There is happiness. There it comes. It comes nearer and nearer. I hear its steps already. And if we do not see it, we shall not know it. But what does that matter? Others will see it. Anya, where are you? That's Varya again. Disgraceful. Oh, never mind. Let's go to the river. It's nice there. Let's go. Anya! Anya! I'm full-blooded and have already had two strokes. It's hard for me to dance, but, as they say, if you're in Rome, you must do as Rome does. I've got the strength of a horse. My dead father, who liked to joke, peace to his bones, used to say, talking of our ancestors, that the ancient stock of the Simonov Pishins was descended from that identical horse that Caligula made a senator. But the trouble is, I've no money. A hungry dog only believes in meat. So, I only believe in money. Yes, there is something equine about your figure. Well, a horse is a fine animal. You can sell a horse. Madame Lupakin? Madame Lupakin? Decayed gentleman? Yes, I am a decayed gentleman. And I'm proud of it. We've hired the musicians, but how are they to be paid? If the energy which you, in the course of your life, have spent in looking for money to pay interest had been used for something else, then I believe, after all, you'd be able to turn everything upside down. Nietzsche, a philosopher, a great, very great, most celebrated man, a man of enormous brain, says in his books that you can forge banknotes. And have you read Nietzsche? Well, Dushenka told me. 
Now I'm in such a position, I wouldn't mind forging them. I've got to pay 310 rubles the day after tomorrow. I've already got 130. I've lost the money. The money's gone. Where's the money? <sighs> Here it is behind the lining. I even began to perspire. <laughs> Why is Leonid away so long? What's he doing in town? Dunyasha, give the musicians some tea. Business is off, I suppose. And the musicians needn't have come, and we needn't have got up this ball. Well, never mind. Here's a pack of cards. Think of any one card you like. I've thought of one. Now shuffle. All right now. Give them here. Oh dear, Mr. Pusheen. I'm Zoe Gray. Now look and you'll find it in your coattail pocket. Eight of spades! Quite right! Think of that now. Now, tell me quickly, what's the top card? Well, the Queen of Spades. Right! Well, now, what card's on top? Ace of Hearts. Right. How lovely the weather is today. Oh, yes, it's lovely weather, madam. You are so beautiful. You are my ideal. You, madam, please me very much, too. Madam Ventriloquist, bravo! Think of that now. Delightful, Charlotta Ivanova. I'm simply in love. In love? Can you love? Guter Mensch aber shelter musicant. Oh, you horse. Little wretch. What? Would you? Leonid hasn't come yet. I don't understand what he's doing so long in town. Everything must be over by now. The estate must be sold, or if the sale never came off, then why does he stay so long? Uncle has bought it, I'm certain of it. Oh, yes. Grandmother sent him her authority for him to buy it in her name and transfer the debt to her. She's doing it for Anya, and I'm certain that God will help us and Uncle will buy it. Grandmother sent 15,000 rubles from Yaroslav to buy the property in her name. She won't trust us, and that wasn't even enough to pay the interest. My fate will be settled today, my fate. Madame Lupakin. Eternal student. He's already been expelled twice from university. Why are you getting angry, Varya? He's teasing you about Lopakin. Well, what of it? You can marry Lopakin if you want to. He's a good, interesting man. You need him if you don't want to. Nobody wants to force you against your will, my darling. I do look at the matter seriously, little mother, to be quite frank. He's a good man, and I like him. Then marry him. I don't understand what you're waiting for. I can't propose to him myself, little mother. People have been talking about him to me for two years now, but either he either says nothing or jokes about it. I understand. He's getting rich, he's busy, he can't bother about me. If I had some money, even a little, or even only a hundred rubles, I'd throw up everything and go away. I'd go into a convent. How nice. A student ought to have sense. How ugly you are now, Peter. How old you've grown. But I can't go on without working, little mother. I want to be doing something every minute. <laughs> Epikotov's broken a billiard cue. Why is Epikotov here? Who said he could play billiards? I don't understand these people. Don't tease her, Peter. You see that she's quite unhappy without that. Eh, she takes too much on herself. She keeps on interfering in other people's business. The whole summer she's given no peace to me or to Anya. She's afraid we'll have a romance all to ourselves. What is it to do with her? As if I'd ever given her grounds to believe I'd stoop to such vulgarity. We are about to love. Then I suppose I must be beneath love. Why isn't Leonid here? Only I knew whether the estate is sold or not. The disaster seems to me so improbable that I don't know what to think. I'm all at sea. I may scream. Or do something silly. Save me, Peter. Say something. Say something. Isn't it all the same, whether the estate is sold today or isn't? It's been all up with it for a long time. There's no turning back. The, the path's grown over. Be calm, dear. You shouldn't deceive yourself. For once in your life, at any rate, you must look at the truth straight in your face. What truth? You see where truth is and where untruth is, but I seem to have lost my sight and see nothing. You boldly settle all important questions, but tell me, dear... 
isn't it because you're young? Because you haven't had time to suffer till you settle a single one of your questions? You boldly look forward, isn't it because you cannot foresee or expect anything terrible because so far life has been hidden from your young eyes? You are bolder, more honest, deeper than we are. But think only, be just a little magnanimous, and have mercy on me. I was born here. My father and mother lived here, my grandfather too. I love this house. I couldn't understand my life without that cherry orchard, and if it really must be sold, sell me with it. My son was drowned here. Have pity on me, good kind man. You know I sympathize with all my soul. Yes, but it ought to be said differently. Differently. I'm so sick at heart today, you can't imagine. Here it's so noisy, my soul shakes at every sound. I shake all over and I can't go away by myself. I'm afraid of the silence. Don't judge me harshly, Peter. I loved you as if you belonged to my family. I'd gladly let Anya marry you. I swear it, only dear, you ought to work. Finish your studies. You don't do anything, only fate throws you about from place to place. It's so odd. Isn't it true? Yes? And you ought to do something to your beard to make it grow better. <laughs> you are funny. I don't want to be a Beau Brummel. This telegram's from Paris. I get one every day. Yesterday and today. That wild man is ill again. He's bad again. He begs for forgiveness and implores me to come. And I really ought to go to Paris to be near him. You look severe, Peter, but what can I do, my dear? What can I do? He's ill. He's alone, unhappy. And who's to look after him? Who's to keep him away from his errors to give him his medicine punctually? And why should I conceal it and say nothing about it? I love him. That's plain. I love him. I love him. That love is a stone round my neck. I'm going with it to the bottom, but I love that stone and can't live without it. Don't think badly of me, Peter. Don't say anything to me. Don't say. For God's sake, forgive me speaking candidly, but that man has robbed you. No, no, no. You oughtn't to say that. But he's a wretch. You alone don't know it. He's a petty thief. A nobody. You're 26 or 27 and still a schoolboy of the second class. Why not? You ought to be a man. At your age, you ought to be able to understand those who love. And you ought to be in love yourself. You must fall in love. Yes, yes, you aren't pure. You're just a freak, a queer fellow, a funny growth. Oh! What is she saying? I'm above love. You're not above love. You're just what our fears calls a bungler. Not to have a mistress at your age. This is awful. W what is she saying? Ugh. Awful. I can't stand it. I'll go away. All is over between us. Peter, wait. Silly man, I was joking. Peter! <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Peter's fallen downstairs. This Peter's a marvel. Well, Peter, you pure soul, I beg your pardon. Let's dance. Well, Grandfather? I'm not well. At our balls some time back, generals and barons and admirals used to dance, and now we send for post office clerks and the station manager. Even they come as a favor. I'm very weak. The dead master, the grandfather, used to give everybody sealing wax when anything was wrong. I've taken sealing wax every day for 20 years and, and more. Perhaps that's why I still live. <laughs> I'm tired of you, grandfather. <sighs> if only you'd hurry up and kick the bucket. Oh, you... Bungler. Mercy. I'll sit down. I'm tired. Somebody in the kitchen was saying just now that the cherry orchard was sold today. Sold to whom? He didn't say to whom. He's gone now. 
Some old man was chattering about it a long time ago. A stranger. And Leonid Andreevich isn't here yet. He hasn't come. He's wearing a light demi saison coat. He'll catch a cold. Oh, these young fellows. I'll die of this. Go and find out, Yasha, to whom it's sold. Oh, but he's been gone a long time, the old man. <laughs> Why do you laugh? What are you glad about? Epikotov's too funny. He's a silly man. Two and twenty troubles. Fears, if the estate is sold, where will you go? I'll go wherever you order me. Why do you look like that? Are you ill? I think you ought to go to bed. Yes. I'll go to bed, and who will hand things round and give orders without me? I've the whole house on my shoulders. Lubov Andreevna, I want to ask a favor of you, if you'll be so kind. If you go to Paris again, then please take me with you. It's absolutely impossible for me to stop here. What's the good of talking about it? You see for yourself that this is an uneducated country with an immoral population, and it's so dull. The food in the kitchen is beastly, and there's this fears walking about mumbling various inappropriate things. Take me with you. Be so kind. I come to ask for the pleasure of a little waltz, dear lady. But all the same, you wonderful woman, I must have a hundred and eighty little rubles from you. I must. A hundred and eighty little rubles. Oh, will you understand my soul's deep restlessness? <sighs> the young mistress tells me to dance. There are a lot of gentlemen, but few ladies, and my head goes around when I dance, and my heart beats. Fears Nikolaevich, the post office clerk, told me something just now that made me catch my breath. What did he say to you? He says you're like a little flower. <sighs> Impolite. Like a little flower. I'm such a delicate girl. I simply love words of tenderness. You'll lose your head. You, Avdotya Fedorovna, want to see me no more than if I was some insect. Oh, life. What do you want? Undoubtedly, perhaps you may be right. But certainly, if you regard the matter from the aspect, then you, if I may say so, and you must excuse my candidness, have absolutely reduced me to a state of mind. I know my fate. Every day something unfortunate happens to me, and I've grown used to it a long time ago. I even look at my fate with a smile. You gave me your word, and though I... Please, we'll talk later on, but leave me alone now. I'm meditating now. Every day something unfortunate happens to me, and I, if I may so express myself, only smile and even laugh. Haven't you gone yet, Simeon? You really have no respect for anybody. You go away, Dunyasha. You play billiards and break a cue, and walk about the drawing rooms as if you were a visitor. You cannot, if I may say so, call me to order. I'm not calling you to order, I'm only telling you. You just walk about from place to place and never do your work. Goodness only knows why we keep a clerk. Whether I work or walk about or eat or play billiards is only a matter to be settled by people of understanding and my elders. You dare talk to me like that? You dare? You mean that I know nothing? Get out of here. This minute. Uh, well, I must ask you to express yourself more delicately. Get out this minute. Get out. Two and twenty troubles. I don't want any sign of you here. I don't want to see anything of you. I'll make a complaint against you. What, coming back? Go, go, go. I'll show you. Are you going? Are you going? Well then, take that. Ah! Ugh. Much obliged. I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. I thank you for my pleasant reception. It isn't worth any thanks. I didn't hurt you, did I? No, not at all. There'll be an enormous bump, that's all. The Pawkins returned. Now we'll see what there is to see and hear what there is to hear. You smell of cognac, my dear, my soul, and we're all having a good time. Is that you, Yermolai Alexievich? Why were you so long? Where's Leonid? Leonid Andreevich came back with me. He's coming. Well, what? Is it sold? Tell me. 
the the sale ended at four o'clock. We missed the train, so we had to wait till half past nine. Oh, my, my head's going round a little. Leon, what's happened? Leon, well? Quick, for the love of God! Uh, here, take this. Here are anchovies, herrings from Kirch. Oh, I've had no food today. I have had a time. Oh, I'm awfully tired. Help me change my clothes, Fiers. What happened? Come on, tell us. Is the cherry orchard sold? It is sold. Who bought it? I bought it. <laughs> I <laughs> bought it! Wait, ladies and gentlemen, please. M my head's going round. I can't talk. <laughs> when, when we got to the sale, uh, Diragonov was there already. Leonid Andreevich had only 15,000 rubles, and Diragonov offered 30,000 on top of the mortgage to begin with. I saw how matters were, so I grabbed hold of him and bid 40. He went up to 45, I offered 55. That means he went up by fives and I went up by tens. Well, it came to an end. I bid 90 more than the mortgage and it stayed with me. The cherry orchard is mine now. Mine. <laughs> my God, my God, the cherry orchard's mine. Tell me I'm drunk or mad or dreaming. Don't laugh at me. If my father and grandfather rose from their graves and looked at the whole affair and saw how their Yermolai, their beaten and uneducated Yermolai, who used to run barefoot in the winter, how that very Yermolai has bought an estate, which is the most beautiful thing in the world. I've bought the estate where my grandfather and my father were slaves, where they weren't even allowed into the kitchen. I'm asleep. It's only a dream, an illusion. It's the fruit of imagination, wrapped in the fog of the unknown. She threw down the keys. She wanted to show she was no longer mistress here. Well, it's all one. Hey, musicians, play! I want to hear you! Come and look at Yermolai Lepakin laying his axe into the cherry orchard. Come and look at the trees falling. We'll build villas here, and our grandsons and great-grandsons will see a new life here. Play on, music! <laughs> <laughs> Why, then? Why didn't you take my advice? Oh... My poor, dear woman, you can't go back now. <laughs> oh, if, if only the whole thing was done with, if only our uneven, unhappy life were changed. She's crying. Let's go into the drawing room and leave her by herself. Come on. What's that? Bandsman, play nicely. Go on, do just as I want you to. The new owner, the new owner of the cherry orchard is coming. I can pay for everything! Mother? Mother, are you crying? My dear, kind, good mother, my beautiful mother, I love you, bless you. The cherry orchard is sold. You've got it no longer. It's true, true. But don't cry, mother. You've still got your life before you. You've still your beautiful, pure soul. Come with me. Come, dear, away from here. Come. We'll plant a new garden, finer than this. And you'll see it. And you'll understand. And deep joy, gentle joy will sink into your soul like the evening sun. And you'll smile, mother. Come, dear, let's go.
Thank you, brothers. Thank you. The common people have come to say goodbye. I am of the opinion, Yermolai Alexeyevich, that they are good people, but they don't understand very much. You gave them your purse, Luba. You can't go on like that. You can't. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't. Please, I ask you most humbly just a little glass to say goodbye. Uh, I didn't remember to bring any from town, and I only found one bottle at the station. Please do. Won't you really have any? If I only knew, I, I wouldn't have bought any. Well, I shan't drink any either. You have a drink, Yasha, at any rate. To those departing, and good luck to those who stay behind. I can assure you that this isn't real champagne. Eight rubles a bottle. It's devilish cold here. There are no fires today. We're going away. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I'm just pleased. It's October outside, but it's as sunny and as quiet as if it were summer. Good for building. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that it's only 47 minutes till the train goes. You must go off to the station in 20 minutes. Hurry up. Oh, I think it's time we went. The carriages are waiting. Where the devil are my galoshes? They're lost. Anya? I can't find my galoshes. I can't! I've got to go to Kharkov. I'm going in the same train as you. I'm going to spend the whole winter in Kharkov. I've been hanging about with you people, going rusty without work. I can't live without working. I must have something to do with my hands. They, they hang about as if they weren't mine at all. We'll go away now, and then you'll start again on your useful labors. Have a glass. I won't. So, you're off to Moscow now? Yes. I'll see them into town, and tomorrow I'm off to Moscow. Yes. I expect the professors don't lecture nowadays. They're waiting till you turn up. <laughs> That's not your business. How many years have you been going to the university? Think of something fresh. This is old and flat. You know, we may not meet each other again, so just let me give you a word of advice on parting. Don't wave your hands about. Get rid of that habit of waving them about, and then building villas and reckoning on their residents becoming freeholders in time. That's the same thing. It's all a matter of waving your hands about. Whether I want to or not, you know. I, I like you. You've thin, delicate fingers, like those of an artist, and you've a thin, delicate soul. Goodbye, dear fellow. Thanks for all you've said. If you want any, take some money from me for the journey. Why should I? I don't want it. But you've nothing. Yes, I have, thank you. I've got some poor translation. Here it is in my pocket. Oh, but I can't find my galoshes! Take your rubbish away! Why are you angry, Varya? Huh? These aren't my galoshes! In the spring, I sowed three thousand acres of poppies. And now I've made forty thousand rubles net profit. And when my poppies were in flower, what a picture it was. So I, as I was saying, made forty thousand rubles. And I mean, I'd, I'd like to lend you some, because... I can afford it. Why turn your nose up at it? I'm just a simple peasant. Your father was a peasant. Mine was a chemist. And that means absolutely nothing. No, no. Even if you gave me 20,000, I should refuse. I'm a free man. And everything that all you people, rich and poor, value so highly and so dearly hasn't the least influence over me. It's like a flock of down in the wind. I can do it that you. I can pass you by. I'm strong and proud. Mankind goes on to the highest truths and to the highest happiness, such as only possible on earth. And I go in the front ranks. Will you get there? I will. I'll get there and show others the way. 
Well, goodbye, old man. It's time to go. Here we stand, pulling one another's noses, but life goes its own way all the time. When I work for a long time and I don't get tired, then I think more easily, and I think I get to understand why I exist. And there are so many people in Russia, brother, who live for nothing at all. Still, work goes on without that. Leonid Andreevich, they say, has accepted a post in a bank. He will get 60,000 rubles a year. But he won't stand it. He's very lazy. Mother asks if he will stop them cutting down the orchard until she has gone away. Yes, really. You ought to have enough tact not to do that. All right. All right. Yes, he is right. Has Fears been sent to the hospital? I gave the order this morning. I suppose they've sent him. Simeon Pentaleevich, please make inquiries if Fears had been sent to the hospital. I told Igor this morning. What's the use of asking ten times? The aged Fears, in my conclusive opinion, isn't worth mending. His forefathers had better have him. I only envy him. Well, of course, I thought so. Two and twenty troubles. Has Fiers been taken away to the hospital? Yes. Why didn't they take the letter to the doctor? It'll have to be sent after him. Where's Yasha? Tell him his mother's come and wants to say goodbye to him. Oh, she'll make me lose all patience. If you only looked at me once, Yasha, you're going away, leaving me behind. <laughs> What's the use of crying? In six days, I'll be again in Paris. Tomorrow we get into the express and off we go. I can hardly believe it. Viva la France! It doesn't suit me here. I can't live here. It's no good. Well, I've seen the uncivilized world. I've had enough of it. What do you want to cry for? You behave yourself properly and then you won't cry. Send me a letter from Paris. You know I loved you, Yasha, so much. I'm a sensitive creature, Yasha. Somebody's coming. We'd better be off. There's no time left. <sighs> Somebody smells of herring. We needn't get into our carriages for ten minutes. Goodbye, dear house, old grandfather. The winter will go, the spring will come, and then you'll exist no more. You'll be pulled down. How much these walls have seen. <laughs> My treasure, you're radiant. Your eyes flash like two jewels. Are you happy? Very? Very. A new life is beginning, Mother. Yes, really, everything's all right now. Before the cherry orchard was sold, we all were excited, and we suffered, and then when the question was solved once and for all, we all calmed down and even became cheerful. I'm a bank official now, and a financier. Red in the middle. And you, Luba, for some reason or other, look better, and there's no doubt about it. Yes, my nerves are better, it's true. I sleep well. Take my luggage out, Yasha, it's time. My little girl, we'll soon see each other again. I'm off to Paris. I'll live there on the money your grandmother from Yaroslav sent along to buy the estate. Bless her, though it won't last long. You'll come back soon. Soon, mother, won't you? I'll get ready and pass the exam at the higher school, and then I'll work and help you. We'll read all sorts of books to one another, won't we? We'll read in the autumn evenings. We'll read many books, and a beautiful new world will open before us. You'll come, mother. I'll come, my darling. Da 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 Charlotta is happy. She sings. My little baby, bye-bye. Hush, my little boy. Hush, my nice little boy. I'm so sorry for you. So please find me a new place. I can't go on like this. We'll find one, Charlotta Ivanova. Don't you be afraid. Oh, everybody's leaving us. Varya's going away. We've suddenly become unnecessary. I've nowhere to live in town. I must go away. <laughs> Never mind. Nature's marvel! Oh, let me get my breath back. I'm tired out. My most honored. Give me some water. Come for money, what? I'm your humble servant, and I'm going out of the way of temptation. 
I haven't been here for ever so long. Dear madam, you here, glad to see you, man of immense brain. Take this, take it. Four hundred roubles. That leaves eight hundred forty. As if I were dreaming. Where did you get this from? Stop, it's hot. A most unexpected thing happened. Some Englishmen came along and found some white clay on my land. And here's four hundred for you, beautiful lady. Give you the rest later. Just now a young man in a train was saying that some great philosopher advises us all to jump off roofs. Jump, he says, and that's all. To think of that now. More water. Who were these Englishmen? I've leased off the land with the clay for them to twenty-four years. Now excuse me, I've no time. I must run off. I must go to Znoikov and Kardamanov. I owe them all money. Goodbye. I'll come in on Thursday. We're just off to town, and tomorrow I go abroad. What? Why to town? I see furniture, trunks. Well, never mind. Never mind. These Englishmen are men of immense intellect. Never mind. Be happy. God will help you. Never mind. Everything in this world comes to an end. And if you should happen to hear that my end has come, just remember this old horse and say, There was once such and such a Simonov Pishin. God bless his soul. Wonderful weather. Yes. Dushenka sends her love. Now we can go. I have two anxieties, though. The first is poor Fears. We've still five minutes. Mother, Fears has already been sent to the hospital. Yasha sent him off this morning. The second is Varya. She's used to getting up early and to work, and now she's no work to do. She's like a fish out of water. She's grown thin and pale, and she cries, poor thing. You know very well, Yermolai Alexeyevich, that I used to hope to marry her to you, and I suppose you are going to marry somebody. She loves you. She is your sort. And I don't understand, I really don't, why you seem to be keeping away from each other. I don't understand. To tell the truth, I don't understand it myself. It's all so strange. If there's still time, I'll be ready at once. Let's get it over, once and for all. I don't feel as if I could ever propose to her without you. Excellent. It'll only take a minute. I'll call her. The champagne's very appropriate. They're empty. Somebody's already drunk them. I call that licking it up. Excellent. We'll go out. Yasha Ale. I'll call her in. Varya, leave that and come here. Come! Yes. I can't seem to find it. What are you looking for? I packed it myself and I don't remember. Where are you going to now, Barbara Mahalinova? I? To Ragulins. I've got an agreement to go and look after their house, as a housekeeper or something. Is that uh, Yashnevo? It's about 50 miles. So, life in this house is finished now? Where is it? Perhaps I put it away in the trunk. Yes, there will be no more life in this house. And I'm off to Kharkov at once, by this train. I have a lot of business on hand. I'm leaving Yepikorov here. I've taken him on. Well, well. Last year at this time, the snow was already falling, if you remember. And now it's nice and sunny. Only, it's rather cold. There's three degrees of frost. I didn't look. And our thermometer's broken. Yemelai Alexievich! This minute! Well... We must go. Yes, it's quite time, little mother. I'll go to Ragulin's today, if I don't miss the train. Anya, put on your things. Now we can go away. Away! My friends, my dear friends, can I be silent in leaving this house forevermore? Can I restrain myself in saying farewell from expressing those feelings which now fill my whole being? Uncle. Uncle, you shouldn't. <laughs> Double the red into the middle. I'll be quiet. Well, it's time to be off. 
If I cut off my coat... I'll sit here one more minute. It's as if I'd never really noticed what the walls and ceilings of this house were like, and now I look at them greedily with such tender love. I remember when I was six years old on Trinity Sunday. I sat at this window and looked and saw my father going to church. Have all the things been taken away? Yes, all, I think. You see that everything's quite straight, Yepikoda. <coughs> oh, you may depend on me, Ermolai Alexeyevich. <coughs> What's the matter with your voice? Oh, I swallowed something just now. I was having a drink of water. <coughs> what, in, what manners? We go away, and not a soul remains behind. Till the spring. What are you doing? I never thought... Come along. Let's take our seats. It's time. The train will be in directly. Peter, here they are, your galoshes, by the trunk. How old and dirty they are. Come on. Oh, the train, the station. Cross in the middle, a white double in the corner. Let's go. Are you all here? There's nobody else? There's a lot of things in here. I must lock them up. Come. Goodbye, home. Goodbye, old life. Welcome, new life. Till the spring, then. Come on. Till we meet again. <laughs> oh, 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 my sister, my sister. My dear, my gentle, beautiful orchard. My life, my youth, my happiness. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mother! <coughs> to look at the walls and the windows for the last time. My dead mother used to like to walk about this room. Oh, my sister, my sister. Mother! <coughs> We're coming! It's locked. And they've gone away. <laughs> uh, they've forgotten about me. Never mind. I'll sit here. And Leonid Andreevich will have gone in a light overcoat instead of putting on his fur coat. Uh, I didn't see. Oh, these young people. <sighs> Life's gone on as if I'd never lived. <laughs> oh, I'll lie down. You've no strength left in you. Nothing left at all. Oh, you blur. literally ends with the guess I'll die meme. <laughs> <laughs>